while discussing classes we said class consists of data and functions and functions operate on data in this tutorial we will see more about functions functions are logical unit of instructions we know programs are logical collection of instructions and a single program can be divided into various functions each having a logical unit roughly in an object oriented world functions corresponds to operations which are performed by entities let's try to understand this with the help of a real world example one of the best examples is atm working which is any time money working now within atm we have a user who interacts with atm he interacts with atm by inserting a card and inserting a password then he will check the amount of balance left in his account and he will then withdraw the money now this all represents the operations which are performed by the user hence this all will become functions within the user so all this insert card insert password check amount and withdraw money can be made functions within the user class now atm also performs a variety of functions first is it validates the card following which it validates the password it checks the amount and it updates the amount post the transaction so all these functions will be naturally present within the atm class now the interaction between user and atm can be coded in java making atm an object and the following operations which it performs as functions so before we make functions it's very necessary we list down all the operations and then decide out of which out of all these functions which should be made public private or protected java provides three different ways or three different access modifiers one is private function other is public function and third one is protected function so let's first look at the first two dif two different types that is the public and private the protected type will come later on with inheritance we have created a project with name functions and within which we created a atm operation class now within this class we have the validate card and validate password operation in the form of java methods now if you look carefully at the ss modifier which i used it's private in nature for validate card and validate password this is because both these functions are not exposed by this class to the outside world in case if we try to expose it to the outside world it can cause problems since someone might try to intercept the code and provide a value which may not return proper validation to help us remove in this java allows us to make a function as private if we make a function as private it can be invoked only within that particular class it can be invoked by other functions of the same class but it cannot be accessed outside the class now we have created a validate method which is public in nature and which returns a boolean value and which takes card id and password now within this we invoke the true private functions which we created and we are performing an and operation so in case both of them are true then only it will return true now this which we pass to a particular function is known as parameter which will be replaced with the values when we invoke a call now within the main dot java present in the same package we created an object of atm operation and we invoke the validate method as we know this validate method will further invoke call to validate card and validate password now in validate card we check the value is not equal to null then we return true in our case the value is 12 for so it will return us true and in validate password we check whether the password is blank again in our example the password is not blank it comes as hello so when we invoke this function and try to print the output by using sys out statement we will be able to get the output as true 
So let's try doing that. Now, as you can see, the result came as true, indicating that the both the private functions were invoked from the public function validate. In some books, the validate method is also known as facet, facet pattern. This is because by using facet, you can hide the implementation of the corresponding functions which are invoked internally. So based upon the diagram which we made on ATM, we are able to determine what all functions should be internal to ATM and what all functions should be exposed to the user to invoke a call. Since we exposed the validate method by using public, it can be invoked by any other class which will be able to create this ATM operation object. In a similar way, like private and public, we also have protected type, but this type deals more with inheritance. So we will look at it once we have completed the inheritance completely. Next, let's look at inheritance in Java.